Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. I'm ready to bring you another week, beginning with Box 13. If you do have any comments, send them to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. Uh, and you can also become a fan of the show on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. And we actually turn to the Dragnet Facebook page. I got a comment from Chris who says, Hey Adam, a little bit of news for you. A new graphic novel has been released with a reimagining of Box 13. It's by Comicology. It's a great 21st century adaptation of a great series. Check it out. And I actually found the press release from Comic uh, Comicology. Uh, it's created by Dave Gallagher and Steve Ellis. Um, and uh, the the stories, they've got it here. Uh, it follows investigative author Dan Holliday, who has spent the last several years of his life researching the secrets behind the MKULTRA project. His latest book has brought him a degree of notoriety, but a mysterious numbered box left on his book signing table is too much to resist. Once open, the box sends him spending on a harrowing journey of self-discovery and driving mystery. What is in Box 13? While inspired by the noir serial of the 1940s, the reimagining uh, blends in the disorienting action mysteries of the 1960s, like the Manchurian Candidate, the Prisoner, and the um, Modesty Blaze, wrapped in a modern tale in a digital medium. There's gunplay, conspiracy, romance, psychological drama, train chases, motorcycle chases, and danger, author David uh, Gallagher told CBR. But at its heart, it's a story about rediscovering your place in the world after everything in your life changes forever. So it sounds pretty interesting. Uh, there have been several, actually, old-time radio shows uh, that have inspired uh, spin-off uh, graphic novels. Uh, the most uh, obvious example was Pat Novak for Hire, and there was a uh, Yours Truly Johnny Dollar, uh, as well as a Boston Blackie. And I can definitely appreciate um, uh, these artists who are getting inspired by some of these old radio shows and bringing them to a new generation through a different media. And you can always hope, too, that that will lead to some interest in a um, the source material, kind of like somebody doing Othello in space. All right, I want to let you know about our sponsors before you get started. If you like the flexibility to live your life and do the things that are important to you, you'll like go to meeting. With GoToMeeting's conferencing uh, solutions, you can meet virtually with clients and business partners and reduce the cost associated with doing business. GoToMeeting is from Citrix, the maker of the trusted GoToMyPC product. Like GoToMyPC, it's simple to use and doesn't require you to learn new technology. Listeners to the great detectives of old time radio can try GoToMeeting free for 45 days. Uh, for this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com slash podcast. That's GoToMeeting.com slash podcast. And now let's go ahead and listen to Box 13, The Treasure of Hangley. Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13, Care of the Star Times. If your advertisement is on the level, I think you'll find this worth your time. Be in the Quan Hai shop in Chinatown at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Pretend you want to buy some jade. Reject the first two pieces offered, then mention the Hang Lee piece in the window. Buy the Hang Lee. This will be worth a lot of money to you. Remember, it's the Quan Hai shop in China. Ask for jade, but reject the first two pieces. Then mention the Hang Lee piece in the window. Go back and wait for further instructions. Hmm. That was the letter. No signature. It sounded interesting, and it was. If you like murder. <laughs> And now back to The Treasure of Hang Lee, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. I don't get it, Mr. Holliday. Why should you reject the first two pieces? Ah, that's what makes the letter interesting, Susie. 
Why reject the first two pieces and then mention the Hangley piece? All right. Why? Hmm. I think I've got an idea. What is it? Pretty obvious, Susie. Look, the letter doesn't say anything about identifying myself, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, if I follow instructions, follow them exactly, I'll be tipping myself to someone in the store. Do you get it? Oh, sure. Whoever wrote the letter will be there, too, waiting for you to follow instructions. That's a great deduction. And I did it all myself, too. You sure did. Okay, Susie, I'm going to make like Marco Polo and visit our Chinese friends. It took me a half an hour to drive to Chinatown and another ten minutes to find the shop of Quan Hai. I looked in the windows. There was the usual line of stuff. Back scratchers, Quan Yens, bamboo trinkets, red lacquer bowls. But only one piece of jade. It was roughly square and seemed to have been broken. It, it looked like a part of a bigger piece. So I went into the shop. There were six or seven other people besides myself, and, well, they were looking at curios, and no one paid any attention to me. Then a young Chinese clerk smiled and came over to me. Oh, yes, sir. Can I help you, please? Oh, yes, I, uh, I want to buy a piece of jade. Yes, sir. You want a certain color? Well, I don't know. This is a very nice piece, sir. It is what we call the mutton fat color. It's very nice, but not quite what I want. A ring, perhaps? Cough links? A snuff bottle? Mm, I don't know. You see, it's for a gift. Oh, this piece is very fine, sir. And the carving is excellent. But it is not very old. Oh, uh, there's a piece in the window. The only piece. What is that? The piece in the window, sir? Yes, it's a hang leap piece, isn't it? Well? If you will please to follow me, sir. But... The piece is in the window. I know, sir. But for that piece, you would have to see Mr. Kwan. This way, please. If you please, sir, in here. I will send for Mr. Kwan. You will please excuse me now, sir, the other customer. Yeah, uh, sure, thank you. It is nothing at all, sir. He went out, and I heard a key turn in the lock of the door. For a moment, I was left alone in a room that was different from the rest of the store. Very different. Instead of the usual junk that tourists buy, this room was a treasure house. Rose quartz, wonderful jade screens, beautiful porcelain bowls that seemed to be lighted from inside, lacquer ware that shone like satin in the dim light. I was looking around me when... Good afternoon, sir. Oh, oh how do you do, Mr. Kwan? I am Mr. Kwan. Please to sit down, sir. Thank you. May I help you, Mr... Mr... My name is Holiday, Dan Holiday. I am honored, Mr. Holiday. Uh, your clerk told me I'd have to see you about that Hang Lee jade in the window. Yes, that is true. You want that piece, Mr. Holiday? Yes, I'd, I'd like to buy it. One moment. It is strange. That Hang Lee piece has lain in the window for two weeks now. You are the first to ask for it. I, uh... Well, I saw it and liked it. Of course. You are a man of excellent taste. It is a very fine piece. Incredibly ancient and incredibly valuable. Oh? Well, maybe... Maybe I can't afford it. The Hangley piece, Mr. Kwan. Thank you, Lan. That is all. Yes, Mr. Kwan. Does he always lock the door when he leaves this room? There are very valuable things in this room, Mr. Holliday. Oh, I see. But the Hang Lee piece, is it valuable, Mr. Kwan? Yes, Mr. Holliday. So valuable that there is no price on it. Odd that you should ask for it. You have no idea how odd. It is a piece of a larger work, a 12 inches by 12 inches to be exact. This is only one third of the original. May I see it? Certainly. Hmm. It looks like a wonderful piece of jade. Do you know what Confucius said about jade? Well, I seem to have heard quite a few things Confucius was supposed to have said. But I doubt if any of them would fit the bill just now. Uh, y yes. But Confucius said that jade is like truth. It gives out a bright rainbow. And it shows a pure spirit among the hills and streams. Truth gives out a bright rainbow. Mm -hmm. That's a very pretty figure of speech, Mr. Kwan. Yes. Truth is very often a figure of speech. 
Is it not, Mr. Holliday? Yes, I'm afraid you're right. What about this piece? Ah, yes. You will note the carving, very beautifully done. These are Chinese characters, aren't they? Yes. It is too bad the other two-thirds of the entire piece are missing. Oh? Why is that? I mean, beyond the fact that it seems a shame to ruin such a magnificent thing. A foolish old Chinese legend, Mr. Holliday. It says that he who translates the writing will be led to a treasure beyond all price. But you'd have to have all three pieces. You would need all three pieces. And where are the other two? I do not know. Mm, I see. Well, Mr. Kwan, how much for this piece? Mr. Holliday, it has no price. You mean it's not for sale? It is not for sale. But I don't understand. It was in the window. And yes, I... and no one inquired about it. Perhaps because collectors would not be interested in a broken piece. That could be. But that still doesn't explain why you had it in your window, and yet not have it for sale. Because, Mr. Holliday, the piece is yours. I beg your pardon. What did you say? The Hungley piece is yours. There is no price on it. But I can't take it without paying for it. You ask for it? Of course I did, Mr. Kwan, but I'm prepared to pay for it. I I'm... am sorry. There is no price. The piece is yours for the taking. Hmm. Well, suppose someone else had come in and asked for it. Would you have given it to anyone? Only to one who asked for it by name, as you did. I don't understand. Truth, Mr. Holliday, is a figure of speech. I have told you the truth. The Hungley piece is yours. Please, take it. Now, if you will excuse me. Just a moment, Mr. Kwan. Suppose I refuse to walk out with this. It is a matter of indifference to me. Then, as a matter of curiosity, how much is the piece worth? That depends upon who has it. And that means what? That is hard to say. To a collector, the Hungley piece would be worth perhaps no more than a hundred dollars. To you, it is worth what you make it. To me, to me it is priceless. Ah, here is Lun. Lun, please show Mr. Holliday to the door. His business here is concluded. It will be great honor, Mr. Quark. Just so. Well, goodbye, Mr. Holliday, and may the bat roost upon your roof. May the what rest for where? The bat is a Chinese symbol for good fortune. <laughs> Goodbye. Please to come with me, Mr. Holliday. You're sure you won't change your mind, Mr. Kwan? About what? The Hangley piece. It is yours. Perhaps we shall meet again, Mr. Holliday. Oh, wait. Just a minute, Mr. Kwan. I... He is gone, Mr. Holliday. Now, if you will please to follow me. All right. Thanks. Is there anything else you wish, Mr. Holliday? Yes, I think there is. And that is? I wish someone would tell me why I advertise for adventure and get mixed up in things like this. Oh, goodbye. So, with the Hangley piece tucked under my arm and a great big question mark tucked under my hat, I left Quan Lee's place. For a moment, I stood in front of the store. No one followed me out, although I knew that whoever had sent me the letter was watching so I drove home and waited in my apartment. I didn't wait long. Hello? Miss Holliday? Yes, it is. I'm the one who sent you the letter. Bring the Hangley piece to 721 South Ferry Street, room 6. Oh, uh, just a minute. How do you know I've got the piece? I was in the store this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And why didn't you ask me for it there? You're wasting time. Please bring the Hangley piece. You will be sorry. What was that address again? 721 South Ferry Street, room 6. And the name? You've got all you need to know. I'll be waiting. Well, well, well. All right, Mr. South Ferry Street. We'll see what you have to offer. Please go back in, Mr. Holliday. Uh, oh, I've got company. Please go back. Sit down. I, uh, I just got up. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Won't you? No. You're much younger than I thought you'd be. Oh, is that so? Well, keep pointing that gun at me and I can age ten years. You have quite a sense of humor for a murderer. Murder? Well, this is news. Go on, Miss... Uh... Loring. Greta Loring. How do you do? Doesn't the name Loring mean anything, Mr. Holliday? Beyond the fact that it belongs to a very pretty girl holding a very ugly gun. 
I'm completely at loss. Lying seems to be another of your doubtful accomplishments. Oh, yes, I'm very talented, but I'm no good at puzzles. You see, I give up too easily. I had a hard time finding you, especially since you changed your name. No, this is news. I'm a murderer, a liar, and I'm living under an alias. This afternoon you gave yourself away by getting the Hangley Jade from that shop. Sooner or later I knew I'd trace you through that piece of jade. Oh, uh-huh. so you were there too. I watched that shop for days waiting for you to get the Hangley. And now that I've got it? I'm going to take it. Then kill you. In that order, I suppose. Give it to me. Right there on the table in front of you. It was a long time ago that you killed my father. I was a little girl then. Lady, how you've grown up. Complete with a gun and a murderous desire to kill me. I've had that desire for a long time. Ever since I found my father dead. Murdered. Go on, Miss Loring. What then? You know as well as I do. And being charming and flip won't help. Now look, Miss Loring. Maybe you've got the wrong man. Have you thought of that? After all, you said I seemed to be much younger than you thought I'd be. All I know is that you went after the Hangley Jade. No one else in the world but you would want that piece. No one else would know what it means. That's circumstantial evidence, Miss Lawrence. Stay where you are. We're through talking, Mr. Holliday. Or shall I call you Benson? You can call me anything you like, but think before you squeeze that trigger. I've thought quite a lot. Now, I'm going to take the Jade. All right. Here. Take it. Giving it to me won't solve everything. Stay there. No, don't. (laughs) With a slam of the door, Miss Loring was gone. So was the Hangley Jade. And so was a piece of my coat with a bullet from her gun ripped through it. But I had the gun. Maybe it could be traced. But first, I had to see a man about a piece of jade at 721 South Ferry Street. Yes, who is it? Holiday. All right, just a minute. Come on in. Now, give me the Hangley piece. I'm sorry, but you're about a half hour too late. What are you talking about? Well, I haven't got it. Maybe this will show you I don't like jokes. Now, look, whatever your name is, take that gun out of my ribs. I'm developing an allergy. Give me the Hangley piece. What have I told you a girl who called herself... Greta Loring took it away from me. What? Loring? You have that name right? I have every reason to remember it, but good. Where is she? I don't know. Well, you... All right. Turn around. Face the window. Now, look, fella. This Turn is... around. Now, where did that girl go? I told you I don't know. How did she find you? The same way you did. She was in Quan High's shop this afternoon. Uh-huh. Okay, Mr. Holliday. Thank you for running that errand for me. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, The Treasure of Hang Lee. It was a nice hit over the top of my head. When the birds and the bees left my skull, I sat up. The room was dark. I started to get to my feet when... You're feeling better, Mr. Holliday? Huh? Mr. Kwan. Oh, I'm flattered you recognize my voice. But you are feeling better? Except for a new head, I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm sorry I did not arrive in time to save you that inconvenience. Mm-hmm. But now that you are here, why? Why am I here? I came to see your friend. Today, I have no friends. Wait a moment. I shall turn on the light. Well, I could use some. Here Most on what's going on. Yes, here. You gave our friend the hungry jade? Now, wait a minute. I... Just a moment. Before you answer, you had better look in this little alcove. Look, Mr. Holliday. Who? Who's that? He's dead. Yes. Quite dead. Stabbed in the back. He's not the man I came here to see. I'm afraid not. I wish he were. Well, then who is this? One of the men I have been seeking for ten years. Ten years? Look, Mr. Kwan, I have a large headache. You're no aspirin with your your Chinese puzzles. The man you came to see was named Benson. That doesn't help. The dead man there is a man named Fisher. And what about a man named Loring? 
Oh, you know a man named Loring. I uh, met his daughter today. Ah, his daughter. Now I am beginning to see. But I presume you gave Mr. Benson the Hung Lee jade you got from me today? I did not. Mr. Loring's daughter relieved me of it. She has it? You know she has. I have only your word for that. Well, that's all you're going to get, Mr. Kwan. I think you mean that. Very well, Mr. Holliday. I shall have to leave now. Oh, no, you don't. There's a murdered man here. How do I know you didn't kill him? That is a reasonable question. You have only my word that I did not kill him. And you'll go with me to the police. Uh, uh, oh, it's funny, huh? N- no. I was thinking of something, a proverb. And being Chinese, I am permitted one proverb. I've got one for you, Mr. Kwan. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Right now, you're the number one bird. Very good, Mr. Holliday. But my proverb is more to the point. Two men of different minds must soon say goodbye. We're going to the police, Mr. Kwan. You leave me no alternative but this. Would, would you use that gun? I'm afraid I would, if you tried to stop me. But please, do not blame me, Mr. Holliday. This is the fault of my ancestors. Your ancestors? They invented gunpowder. Goodbye. <laughs> And so there I was, but where? I called the police and reported the murder without doing my name. I didn't want to stick around because I had other things to do. I had a bullet hole through my coat and out of my head and a big burning desire to catch up with Mr. Benson and Miss Loring. Not to mention a certain Mr. Kwan. The only lead I had was Greta Loring's gun that I'd taken from her. If she had bought it in the city, it would be registered. So I made one more phone call and found out what I wanted. Her address. It was in an apartment the building. And her apartment was number eight. I pressed the buzzer. Yes, who... Good evening, Miss Loring. How did you find me? Oh, I had to. I always return things that I borrow. I believe this is your gun. What are you going to do? Play questions and answers. Please, get out of here. This afternoon, you, you call me a murderer. Why? I... I thought you were someone else... Who? Benson? Yes. Oh, but I'm not. I know that now. Oh, now she tells me. After she puts a bullet through my coat. You know, Miss Loring, two inches higher and you'd have had yourself a corpse. (laughs) Me. I dislike being a corpse. Now you'll talk. Benson killed my father in China ten years ago. It seems he also killed a man called Fisher. David Fisher? David or not, he's just a number at the morgue by now. Then... Then Benson is still alive. I think he is. And you came here. Of course, why not? Oh, don't you see what you've done? Done? Think about it. Oh. He wouldn't know where to find you, but I told him I'd met you. You know, keep track of me. And come here. Listen, have you still got that hang leaks, Jade? Yes. Well, he wants that. If you give it to him, maybe he'll go away. My father was killed because he had the hangley piece. What is there about that piece? There were three pieces. All part of the same screen. It was something about a treasure. Mm-hmm. And the carving on the screen would lead to the treasure. Yes. You have one piece. Benson has the other two. One he killed your father to get. The other he killed Fisher to get. And he'll come here after this third piece. Hey, come on. We've got to get out of here. Wait. Where's your phone? Well, right there, but... Uh... I'm going to call the police. Not yet, Mr. Holliday. Uh, Quan. Yes. I followed you, Mr. Holliday. Then, because I fear Miss Loring would not extend her hospitality to me, I came up the fire escape. Quan. Quan, my father told yes, me... Yes, Loring, yes. Yeah. Your father, Fisher and Benson, killed an old Taoist priest in China to get the Hung Lee screen and its secret. My father never killed anyone. I'm afraid he did. But there are three pieces off the screen. Yes, Mr. Holliday. The three men did not trust one another. They broke the screen up into three pieces. One valueless without the other two. Why? Why did they do that? Because they had to leave China and go their separate ways. They arranged to meet later. Mm-hmm. But, but Benson killed Loring. Yes, but Loring did not have his piece of the Hung Lee. I got it before Benson got to him. And you, you put the piece in the window to trap Benson. Why, Mr. Kwan? Why? The Taoist priest was my honorable father. Oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that. I'm sure you did not. 
They've been all over the world, waiting, waiting, hoping that sooner or later the murderers of my father would trap themselves. Two are dead, and the third... Benson? Yes, Benson. Hey. Must be Benson. You let him in, Mr. Holliday. Let him in, or you crazy Kwan, he's a killer. I said let him in one moment. I will take that gun you put on the table, Mr. Holliday. Give it to me. Take it. Thank you. Now I have two guns. Mr. Benson probably has one. Let him in, Mr. Holliday. If you think I'm going to open that door and let him in, you're crazy. I have two guns. Are you afraid, Mr. Holliday? I... All right. Slow and get back. Next to the wall. Now. You. Get back in there. Better not come in, Benson. Move away now. Who's that? Come in, Mr. Benson. Come in. Holliday, stand in front of me. Right where you are. All right. Go ahead and shoot. I would hit Mr. Holliday. That's right. I'm sorry, Mr. Holliday, but you seem to have been caught between the dragon and the tiger. I want that Hang Lee piece. I... I'll give it to yes, him. Yes, do that, Miss Loring. Give it to him. Benson, you've already killed two men. The third won't make any difference. The Hang Lee piece, Miss Loring. On the table. There. Take it, take it. Good enough. All right, Holliday, move in front of me. Always in front of me. Now stop. Hand me the jade. You, Miss Loring, hand it to me. <laughs> That's it. Now I'm going to move back toward the door. If you shoot, Holiday gets it. Stop right here. Mr. Holiday, my life means nothing because I have devoted it to this moment. But I regret this inconvenience to you. Go on, think what you're doing. Benson won't get away. The police will have his description and be picked up within an hour. Nice dreaming, Holiday. Mr. Kwan, don't. Stay where you are. I regret, Mr. Holiday. Twist away quickly! Twist away! Ah! Mr. Holiday! I'm all right. I got out of the way. But Mr. Benson has gone to his ancestors. Mr. Kwan, are you all right? Yes. It's quite all right, thank you. Go ahead. Miss Loring, call the doctor faster. No, no, please. The three pieces of the screen. Give them to me. You will find two of them in Mr. Benson's pocket. Look, Mr. Kwan. You're hurt badly. You've got to have a doctor. No. That would do no good. Old Chinese proverb. Greatest coward is he who fears death. I'm sorry, Mr. Kwan. They humbly pieces. Please, put them together. All right. There they are. Uh, the treasure of Hongli, right here. Treasure? But... Not gold. Uh, my people learned centuries ago that real treasure is not gold. Of Hongli... Is written here, Jade. But Happy is the man who is contented with his lot. Mr. Kwan. Mr. Kwan. <laughs> it's all right, Miss Lauren. Mr. Kwan is contented. Was all there was to the treasure, Mr. Holliday? Just, just that proverb? That's right, Susie. Maybe it's the best after all. You see, we beat our brains out going after something, and when we've got it, the thing on the other side of the hill always looks better. Happy is the man who is contented with his lot. Gee, you know something, Mr. Holliday? Hmm? What, Susie? I can't think of anything silly to say. That's as it should be. Good night, Susie. Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, with this week's original story by Mark Hopley. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. Part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker, and production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture. Welcome back. 
I think that Mr. Kwan has been my favorite guest uh, character of the entire series. Um, at least who's been sane. The insane ones have been um, entertaining. Uh, but there, there's def this uh, character was definitely very well played. Uh, they didn't have detailed credits on Box 13, but uh, definitely t ha uh, hats off to them. Uh, and to me, I think this does show one of the great strengths of the uh, detective uh, genre. Where at its best, there's, there's somewhat of a message behind it. Uh, particularly in, the, um, in a hard-boiled story like this, because the message of the story flows from uh, the events of it. The more the one challenge you get kind of with the less uh, intellectual uh, detectives, or the more intellectual detectives, is the crimes are not seen uh, as having the same impact because it's played more as a game. So that's another th uh, thought on this. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Got a comment? Send it to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, remember, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Uh, and as always, you can uh, become a fan on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.